this is a this is a uh, old song. I think that some of you might know it. It's "Victory Is Mine." How many know that song? <coughs> Let's sing it together to start off here tonight. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Victory today is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Yes, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan, get me behind. Oh, victory today is mine. All right, I want to speed it up a little bit. Let's do that. Oh, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan, get me high, oh, victory today is mine. Joy, joy is mine, joy is mine, joy today. To have made up mine. This is the way it's going to be. I'm going to have the victory and uh, going to have the uh, the joy. And when you make up your mind and you put your hand in the hand of the Lord, you will have the victory and you will have joy. And uh, we're going to look at Judges chapter 15 tonight. If you want to turn in your Bibles and get ready for uh, our Bible study here tonight. Also want to go to the Lord in time of prayer here for our prayer needs. And uh, we have uh, just many who have been sick. A lot of people have been struggling with sickness. And it's good to see uh, Brenda and Gwen back here tonight. And um, so we're thankful for them being able to get out of the sick bed. And uh, we're going to pray for those who are not able to, to be here tonight. And uh, so I want to take prayer requests. Who, who has a request for uh, someone? And uh, just shout it out. Amen. Brother Mark McKinney. I saw that one on the Facebook. I guess he wanted to know what happened. His kidneys are starting to shut down. All right. He has an appointment tomorrow at 8 o'clock. All right. We're going to pray for Mark McKinney. Let's, uh, let's pray for Gustavo and uh, Sister Leticia said at the prayer meeting yesterday that he was not feeling well at all, so let's lift him up in prayer. Who else? Let's remember Carolyn. Sister Sharon is there with her sister. Let's pray for God's hand upon her life. Remember Frank's co worker? What's his name? Jamie. Jamie. All right, let's pray for Jamie. Who else? Anybody else have a need? All right. Amen. Brother Jay, would you lead us in prayer for these needs here tonight? Lord Jesus. God, we need your help. Jesus, we sit right now. Lead us, God. Direct us. Help us with all the good. Face it, God. Bless our families, bless our needs. Bless Mark McKinney, Lord. Bless you, stop. Help him, Lord. Heal his body. Let you care of him. Frank's co worker, Jamie, God. Move his hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Someone say, victory is ours. Victory is ours. Amen. And now the musicians show up. <laughs> Welcome back. Sorry. We missed you. <laughs> we sang a little 
a cappello here tonight, but uh, maybe at the end we can have you help us out. I want to turn to Judges chapter 15, verses 15 to 19, and uh, I'm going to read here tonight uh, this passage, and it's going to be our uh, the basis uh, for our sermon, our, our lesson here tonight. It says, And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass I have slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called that place Ramathalia. I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember how that's pronounced. That's pretty close, right? And he was sore athirst and called upon the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now I shall die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. But God claimed and hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof in Hekor, which is Lehi, unto this day. The man who defeated with a jawbone of a donkey 1,000 men is a incredible story. As you are being taught Sunday school class, this is one that gets told and uh, one that you might remember from your days in Sunday school. Um, we think of this bravery of, of someone fighting a thousand men and what that looks like, uh, the incredible uh, picture that it kind of uh, shows, the, the imagery I mean, just imagining, um, uh, first of all, just picking up a bone, you know, and taking that bone and that bone becoming your weapon. Uh, there's no, I, I, I don't guess in Scripture, there's no incident in the Bible that is, is more daring than this, than this uh, man in battle with a jawbone of a donkey. Um, the story is, is that we find Samson being abandoned by uh, his brothers from Judah, uh, fellow Israelites. The Philistines have spread themselves out for battle against Judah, and the men of Judah don't want to fight, and so they say, uh, we'll get you the man. And so they come to Samson. In fact, there's 3,000 of them. And they come to him and say, uh, we're here to take you to the Philistines, and and uh, so uh, he doesn't fight them. He offers to uh, give himself and let himself be bound with rope. So 3,000 men of Judah go here to take him away, and, uh, and, and he allows them. It is kind of a disgusting story in the sense that these men who should have been ready to fight for him, they, they're ready to turn him over. I hope that whenever uh, we have friends, that they are not friends who give up on us that easy. Uh, but these are men who gave up on him, and uh, and uh, he was in a place where times were going to be difficult, and uh, they were ready to turn him over. You know, when it comes down to the end, you really need to be in a place where that you would be willing and ready to stand against the enemy. And uh, the enemy's not going to give up the closer we get to the coming of the Lord. He's going to keep fighting, and he's going to fight harder, and he's going to pull more tricks, and he's going to play dirty. And, uh, and we, as the children of God, we have got to be ready to uh, know that he's going to go for the kill, and he wants to take you out. He wants to destroy you. He wants to see you fail. And, um, and so for us to have the victory, we've got to have a made-up mind. We've got to have a mind that says, I'm going to fight whatever comes my way. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep fighting. 
You say, Pastor, you bring this up often. Uh, well, I believe that times are not going to get easier on us. They're going to get harder on us. And uh, I, I just want us to be ready. To, if he can come through your brothers, I believe he will. not going to be abandoned by people because you will. Some of you have experienced this already in your life. Uh, people have abandoned you or forsaken you. Um, we're serving the God, though, who doesn't forsake us. And uh, no matter what we're facing, he's going to be with us, the Bible says, until the end. And uh, so having a mindset that as the enemy closes in, uh, you've got to be ready. So with Samson, uh, the enemy is ready to take him. They're ready to end his life. They're ready to uh, get vengeance on him turning loose those foxes in their fields. Um, they're literally uh, starving because of him. They're going hungry because of him. And they're ready to take it out on him. But when, he, when they come to him uh, and uh, he breaks free from the bonds and the Bible says he sees the new jawbone of a donkey and he picks that up and uh, he begins to uh, fight those Philistines. There were over a thousand there. The Bible says a thousand. And, uh, and so he begins to fight. Now, if you were like me and you think about, well, a jawbone, how effective of, an, of a weapon is that? I, I look at that and think, uh, literally, I try to imagine how you would take and hold a jawbone and, and make it into a weapon, you know. Um, it doesn't really make any sense. I, I look at pictures of it. I looked them up and... and uh, it's real wide on one side, and it's it's skinny on that side down there where the teeth are, where the teeth come out, and it's it's got two places. So he either got a hole down there and was hitting with a big double-sided end, or he broke it in half, or whatever it was. It wasn't a very good weapon. It wasn't a weapon of choice, but it was a weapon uh, that became a tool because it was available, and uh, so that's what he used. So it, it wasn't preferred, but uh, it wasn't the donkey, or it wasn't the jawbone, <coughs> and it wasn't, I'm not here to say it was not the man, it was not the jawbone, but it was the spirit of the Lord that made that weapon effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really what I'm here to talk to you about. <coughs> if one against a thousand seems slim, um, if the jawbone does not seem too effective, um, we obviously would have to point to something else for the success, and we know that to be the Spirit of the Lord. Everyone say, the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is what allowed for the victory. And he Did he have people march around the city and just holler? Yeah. And, and you know, have the destruction and a jawbone is going to do a lot more. Right, right. And so uh, what caused the victory was the spirit of the Lord. I, I don't believe uh, that Samson was anything more uh, than a, a man. He was an ordinary man. In fact, when we see him depicted, we see him as uh, a really Hercules-looking man. I don't necessarily believe that he had to have that kind of physique. Uh, if it was the spirit of the Lord that was doing the work, he didn't have to be seven foot tall. In fact, the Bible doesn't record him as being a giant. It doesn't record him as being uh, something uh, of giant, muscular uh, physique. It doesn't say anything about how he was built. The Bible just says in Judges 13, it says, And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. Well, that sounds like what we need right there, doesn't it? As we are depending on the Lord... Uh, we grow, and he blesses us. Uh, it says, and in this same verse, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of David. So what's the secret to his stamina? What's the secret to his strength? Uh, it's the Spirit of the Lord. And uh, so when you look at yourself and you say, I'm not that much. Or you think of yourself and you think, well, I'm, 
I'm not, I'm not that much. Well, you don't have to be that much because it's the Spirit of the Lord that is able to use you and to be effective in your life. And, and I believe that uh, Zacharias 4, 6 says, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, Spirit says the Lord Almighty. And uh, Zechariah 4, 6, Romans 8, 37 says, not in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Uh, 1 Corinthians Chapter 15, verse 17 says, But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here tonight to remind you that your victory is not in how um, effective you are as a person. It's in how effective He is as your God. Mm -hmm. how, how He is as your strength. As you separate yourself from the Spirit of the Lord, you will not have the victory. If you separate yourself from the Spirit of the Lord, uh, you will, uh, the Bible says in Isaiah 59 too, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. If you isolate yourself from the Spirit of the Lord, uh, then your battles will turn into losses and you won't have the ability to uh, be uh, victorious because we are connected only through Jesus Christ to our strength. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, what does it say? You can do nothing. We, we like to think of ourselves as more than nothing, don't we? I mean, we all do, of course. Um, any conversation you have with somebody, uh, they don't think of themselves of, as nothing. They, uh, they have an opinion of themselves. Uh, we all have an opinion of ourselves. But the, the thing to remember is that apart from Jesus Christ, you can do nothing. If we can remind ourselves of that here tonight, to attach yourself to the, what the Lord is doing. Well, how's the Spirit of the Lord moving? I've been saying this. God is at work. How is the Spirit of the Lord moving in our lives? I want to be attached to that. I want to be connected to that. However the Lord is moving, uh, I want to see victory. Uh, how many want to see victory? Yes. Uh, if I want to see victory, uh, then I need to be uh, connected to the things that God is doing. If God is at work, I need to be in the middle of where he's working. Right. If he's truly uh, doing a work of revival, then I need to be a part of the revival. If he's doing things in the spiritual realm that involve healings, then I need to be involved in praying the prayers for healings. Amen. There's nothing worse than to get to the party late and everything's already had taken place. <laughs> but you want to be in on everything. You want to be a part of what's going on, then you need to be seeking out the Spirit of the Lord, how the, how the Lord is moving in your life. And, you know, long before we had special programs, long before Sunday school and Sunday school contests and, and giveaways, and long before uh, family life centers and ball teams, and long before we modernized and modified, uh, God has always been giving His people the victory. Yes. We, we seem to think that we can come up with modern ways that we're going to be victorious on our own, but it won't happen like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't do anything. I'm not saying that we won't be doing everything we can to reach people and to connect people to God and have programs. Uh, you can have every good program, though, and not have the victory. Right. You can have uh, stained glass windows and a beautiful building and not have the victory. Uh, you can have white robe choirs and you can have a senior pastor and assistant pastor and a youth pastor and a children's pastor and, and, and not have the victory. Okay. We have got to get to the place that we understand 
what brings the victory. Don't forget what the victory comes from. It takes the Spirit of God. It takes a move of the Holy Ghost. It takes a powerful move of God's Spirit in the midst of His people for us to have a victory. And I want to be a part of it. I want to be tuned in to what's God doing? How is He moving? What is it that the church is doing? And how can I be connected to it? Uh, victory is synonymous with the Spirit of God. If you find God, you find victory. If you lose God, you'll lose the victory. If we lose sight of what the Spirit says, I, I want to hear what the Spirit's saying. Yes. Amen. I want you to pray for me right now. I'm suffering dizziness, and it just hit me. And I, I, I just would ask you to rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. God, have your way. Touch me, Lord. Move in my body. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I claim the victory over my circumstances. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The enemy doesn't want us to have the victory. The enemy is going to throw every obstacle in our way to keep us from focusing on victorious thoughts, victorious uh, actions. And, and uh, you know, last week I, I taught uh, how for us to proclaim God is at work. Mm -hmm. I think that's God's will for us. Yes. To be saying to one another, to be saying to people that we meet, to be, be proclaiming the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. Say, you know what, God's at work. Amen. Amen. He's helping us. He's doing things for us that are beyond our own abilities. And, and so it, it's not us, it's not our abilities, it's not our tools, it's only Him yes. that can do the work Thank you, Jesus. and uh, give us the victory. Uh, I believe Samson was a tool that was God used to oh, help the children of Israel. The judges line up. There's, uh, you read about them, and that they, they, each one of them, were somebody who was willing to step up to be a tool to be used of God. We sing that song. I, I, you know, Jesus, use me, Lord. Don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. Um, it's when we recognize that we're something that the Lord can use. How many people have you seen get? Um, high and mighty in themselves and uh, the effectiveness of the tool is lessened because of their pride, because of, of that mindset that they began to have. Um, I never want to see myself as more than what the Lord wants me to be. I want to be used of Him. I want to be effective for Him. I want to be a tool of victory. The enemy can use you as a tool of his victory, but I want to be used as a tool of the Lord. Amen. God has always used something or someone to bring the victory. He's always used people to bring his victory. He's always used some object, uh, something that you can visually, uh, tangibly see to bring his victory. If you look into the scripture with here with Samson, it was a jawbone. With David, it was a slam. Yeah, with Eliezer. It was a sword that his hand clave to in 2 Samuel uh, 23.9. With Adino, it was a spear against 800 men in whom he slew at one time, 2 Samuel 23.8. With Benaiah, it was his walking stick, 2 Samuel 23.20. With Shamgar, anybody remember him? It was a ox goad, and he delivered Israel. With left-handed Ehud, it was a homemade two-edged dagger. Judges 3.16. With Jael, it was a nail and a workman's hammer. Everybody remember that story. Mm -hmm. With Gideon, it was pitchers and lamps and, and trumpets. Judges 6 or 7.20. But with the early church, it was preaching, praying, and fasting. Preaching, praying, and fasting. Fasting, Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 13, I'm talking about the tools of victory here. And I'm talking about the importance of not forgetting 
where the victory comes from. And if I want to be involved in what God is doing in this day and this time, I believe it still takes prayer and it still takes fasting and it takes the preaching of God's word for these things to be um, recognized and, and become effective in our lives. So don't forget what the victory comes from. The original tool of the early church is prayer and fasting. And I, I still believe in it. Amen. I still believe we're not too modern for prayer and fasting. Amen. You know, some churches have modernized to the points where they'll have quilting circles and they will have um, all kinds of hobby interest meetings. Um, they'll have um, potlucks and all of the fellowships. And I, I'm not against these things. I, I'm for these things. But they won't have a prayer meeting. And they won't call a fast. And, uh, and, and we modernize to the point where we forget to uh, do the things that bring the victory. Uh, then we have, as somebody said, we've done got too modern. And uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, if you notice what Samson did, it says there, I read it to you, it says, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it was that the jawbone mattered. It could have been anything that was mentioned. It was just a tool. Perhaps the reason that Samson cast it aside was to draw attention to the fact that it was it was nothing without God. And that would be true, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But but perhaps he cast it aside to help us be able to bring attention to it, to the importance of um, the casting aside of something where the victory comes from. As we think about the things that are being cast aside in the in the church today, um, and, and I, I always feel like that if something's noted in the scripture like this, and it came to pass, and he made an end of speaking, uh, and what was the things that he was saying there right before that? Can you put that scripture back up there from Judges where he is he's speaking? It came to pass, and he had made an end of speaking. Now, right before that, what's, what's he doing there? It says that Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass, I have slain a thousand men. He, he's bringing attention to what has been accomplished. And, and um, you know, in fact, I, I, I think he has that charged up feeling of, of um, perhaps uh, maybe adrenaline. Uh, and he's, he's saying it. I have heaps and heaps and a thousand have been slain. And, and, and then he, he throws that, that jawbone aside. And so perhaps I think that when it's noted here, it's worth noting um, that Lord, help us always be ready to note that the victory comes from the Lord. The victory comes from from the Lord. Lord, help us never be ready to cast aside what God is wanting to use. The victory comes from the, from the Lord. I'm afraid uh, we're trying to finish without what was started with sometimes. I, I need to hear good old fashioned preaching, anointed, Holy Ghost preaching that is just on fire. I need that. Yes. Didn't we hear some good preaching this weekend? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Amen. Amen. I need that. But that preaching, the preacher told me afterwards, he said, Pastor, I felt a difference in the congregation. I felt a difference from just the last time I was here. He says, there's a shift that has taken place in the congregation. Oh, help it to be so. Help yes. it to be so. Amen. Lord, yes. that we are praying. We are yes. fasting. We are seeking the will of God. And so the, uh, the Bible says that the f something about the, except by the foolishness of preaching that you can't be saved. What does it say there? Help me out. 
Is that right? It, 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 preaching is required to be saved. Right. And so, if, if preaching is required for us to be saved, uh, uh, then anointed preaching is what we need. Holy Ghost inspired preaching yeah. is what we need. And uh, these stories that we tell, the story that I'm telling here tonight, uh, um, it, 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 it's a story that you've heard before. It's a story that's familiar to you. But the context of it here tonight is, is that I'm not going to forget about where the victory's coming from. Right. It's coming from people who are ready to still pray. It's coming from people who are still ready to fast. And it's coming from people who are still willing to uh, and ready to come together uh, for what God is wanting to accomplish. If we have a move of God in our church, uh, if, if we have a move of God in the city of West Plains, how many want that? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If we have, it, it won't be all the modern things of life that bring it. I mean, those things can be helpful. It won't be those things that make up our minds, uh, uh, but it will be where we come to God in prayer and in fasting. I love our special days at the church, don't you? Mm -hmm. I love it when we get together and, and we have fellowship. I'm not discounting that. I love special days like Easter Sunday. Wow, a big push for a wonderful day and a, and a great thing. I love Fall Festival. I love Friends Day. I love all these things that we do. But these things will not bring revival without prayer and fasting. And, and so uh, we have to uh, cover everything that we're doing by praying and fasting so that the preaching can be made effective. Uh, what, is, what is the importance of us coming prayed up, church? What is the importance of it? Why do we have to be prayed up for God to be able to work? We, we've got to be in tune with what he's trying to accomplish. If we're not, we're like a team of mules. That one's going this way and one's going that way. And we need to be in tune with what God is trying to accomplish. And, and if you're praying about what God's going to do, and I'm praying about what God's going to do, uh, he's not going to send us in different directions. Right. He's going to do uh, what he his will is going to be accomplished. And uh, God forbid if I get up and I'm trying to lead us in a direction that God doesn't want to go. I need prayer to be able to be in that place. I need to be uh, fasting for, for myself to be in that place. Uh, so what is uh, the child of God that will uh, fast and pray until something happens or where is that person here today? Where is the friend that will pray and fast another friend to be able to come in. Uh, are we praying and fasting for souls right now? I'm encouraging us. We need to be. Where is the saint that will fast for a long period of time? Uh, where is that one who's willing to lay down and sacrifice so that the, the move of God can happen and where the fire from heaven can fall? Uh, are we remembering here tonight where the victory comes from? Amen. As I look at, at uh, Rama uh, the Lehi, um, it, it literally is translated jawbone heel. I didn't realize this until I studied that word. I read over it several times. I'm like, I can't even pronounce that. What does it mean? I like its interpretation better. I can say that. <laughs> It's jawbone heel. Jawbone heel. So after Samson has a great victory, he, he boasts, he sings his own praises, he sets up the place as a place to remember. And uh, so what is the lesson of jawbone heel? What is the lesson that is something we can attach to tonight and we can have for helping us live for God. I believe it's this, that victory can be found in the midst of the enemy on Jawbone Hill.
Victory can be found in the midst of the enemy on Joppa Hill. God provides as long as you're following him. Amen. Amen. After Samson has had a great victory, he testifies, he praises, uh, he looks at this place, and he says, I'm going to remember this. This is Jawbone Hill. This is the place where God did something that was beyond me and beyond my ability because he was the one who brought the victory. And uh, then something happens there. He looks at that. Ramathi Lehi, uh, Jawbone Hill, and, and he becomes weak and thirsty, and the Bible says he feels like he's going to die. And, uh, and uh, from that original tool of victory, God revives him. It says there, God clave and hollow place that was in the jaw. Now, some Theologians believe that that hollow place was Jawbone Hill and that he made a spring come forth from Jawbone Hill. The, the, the writer of the King James Version says it was in the jaw, but if you read several other versions, they refer to it by the name. Um, and so uh, either way, it works for me because God did it. Yeah. And it's a miracle whether it came out of the jawbone or it came out of the hill. Um, it says that God clave a hollow and there water came out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again and he revived. Amen. That, that word that is used there in that chapter 19, uh, it is literally translated to be uh, the spring of the one who called or the caller's spring. Uh, it's a um, it's a testimony that when you call on God, He can do a miracle. Uh, the caller spring, the one who called. I wonder who is going to be the one who prays the prayer for the next person to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I wonder who is going to be the one who prays the prayer that is going to give somebody the courage and the strength to come forward to the altar and, and say, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. I wonder who is going to be the one who is calling out to God and saying, Lord, let this be so, and he makes it so. Do we believe in prayer? Yes. Oh, yeah. Do we believe that when we call on Jesus that miracles can happen? Yes. yes, we do. And so believing this and knowing this and calling on his name, it's a, a memorial to the uh, belief that God can intervene in any situation. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm feeling better already, and thank you for your prayers. I believe that God can intervene in any situation. Mm -hmm. I keep believing that he's going to work in the life of everyone that we're connected with because he is a healing God. Yes. I believe it. Amen. Amen. It's, a, uh, it's a right that we have to have faith in God. Of course, we pray, thy will be done. And that's not always, uh, you know, with the way we want it. Uh, but we can certainly pray, God, in thy will, would you heal? Would you deliver? Would you save? Uh, amen. How many is praying for somebody right now for God to save them? Yes. Amen. amen. I, I believe these are important prayers to have at the forefront of our mind. To have a... It, it, I mean, we're obviously going to pray for our kids. It really uh, does my heart good when someone comes and says, uh, I'm praying for Trey or I'm praying for Tyler. Uh, having these pray for our kids, it's just, uh, I'm praying for them. But to know you're praying for them, uh, that means so much. Amen. Uh, Daniel, when we get together and we start praying for our kids, uh, you bring up your voice and I bring up my voice. And we pray for each other. I believe this is God's will. He's going to do a work in us and our prayers are effective. And I believe there is a spring that refreshes in prayer. A spring of living water. Amen. Amen. Oh, the 
the spring of living water. It, it, that whole, um, the caller spring, that whole concept, it, it, it just encapsulates the theme of God provides. He has people that he is looking out for. Do you believe that? Yeah. It, it, it goes right along with the uh, faith and depending on God. It, it, it shows us and highlights how that God's care for his people uh, just doesn't include victories in battle, but he provides for their need. He provides for their physical needs. He, he, he responds to their cry for help. He responds to their hurts. And, and, and I believe that uh, when we look at him as being the one who is the spring that refreshes and that it happens through prayer, we can come to him with that mindset. Lord, tonight, I'm coming to you. You're the one who springs forth life. You're the one who springs forth healing. You're the one who saves to the guttermost. You're the one who does uh, uh, miracles. And I name this place. Would somebody do that with me here tonight? I name this place, this ground. This is holy ground. This is salvation. We're walking upon uh, and treading upon <coughs> salvation ground. The Lord is going to do works in our church that we cannot even begin to imagine. The Bible says we can even uh, imagine that he'll do beyond that. And so tonight, as we pray prayers for victory, we pray prayers for healings, we, we claim them as from the spring that refreshes when we pray and we fast. I'm telling you here tonight, don't forget what the victory comes from. It comes from prayer and fasting. It comes from seeking God in that place to say, Lord, I am yours. I'm your tool. I, I want to be used the way that you want me to be used. And uh, his strength comes out of that prayer. Mm -hmm. Has anybody experienced that? Yes. His strength. Amen. When you are in your time of prayer, you are being strengthened. Amen. Prayer and fasting is something we need revived among every one of us. I want to read from 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at verse 38. Maybe I could get a helper here to help me finish this out and read that. And while they're doing that, Barb, maybe you could come up here and be ready to help me with the psalm. 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at verse 38. Anybody feel comfortable helping me read? You got it, brother? Read it, brother. And Saul armed David with the arm with his armor and with his armor and he put an helmet of brass upon his head also he armed him with a coat of mail all right and then read read on uh probably about four more verses okay. there and david I'll stop you. his sword upon his armor and he assayed <coughs> assayed to go, for he had not proved it. Mm -hmm. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Palestine. All right. And so what we see here, yeah, what we see here is Saul trying to give David his his tools. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, here's my helmet, and, and here's my uh, armor. And, uh, and and David tries it, but he, he says, I can't do this. i got to have my own stuff. I gotta have my own what what I've proven. Right. <coughs> and uh, it may be good, it may be good, you know, you're a man of valor, you're a man of war, 
and it's good for you. But I've got to have something that's been proven in my life. I'm telling you, we've got to have a prayer life. My prayer life's not helping you. I mean, I'm praying for you, but it's not, it's not helping you have your experience, right? I've got to have my own prayer life. I've got to have my own uh, time of fasting, my own walk with God. So we're talking about here tonight, keep praying and keep fasting. And when you're standing on Jawbone Hill and you're thirsty, remember, call on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just call on Jesus and he will spring up and he will refresh you again and again and again. Amen. Let's sing this soul song. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. As we close this out, I want you to, if you would, just make this a time of prayer and commitment with me and say, Lord, I want to I want to improve my prayer life. I want to improve my walk with you. I want to fast more. I know I need to do these things. Help us here tonight. Oh,